In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a 2D laser effect in Godot 3.1. For this demo, I've got a kinematic character, which I'm controlling with the mouse and keyboard, walking around in a top-down uh, tile map. And so what we want to do in this tutorial is get this guy to shoot. But I don't want him to shoot bullets. I want him to shoot a laser beam, a beam that's going to come out of the gun and travel until it hits something. So pretty much instantaneously. To do that, we're going to need to use two techniques. A ray cast, which is going to be a line projecting from the gun and detecting a collision at some point. And then we're also going to need to draw this laser beam, and we're going to use a line 2D for that. So here's my soldier, and he's got a position 2D marking the muzzle of the gun, so I'll know where to project from. But we're going to need to add the visible component of this laser, which is a line 2D. So I'm going to add a line 2D node. And to start with, we're just going to draw this on the screen uh, just so we can see something. So I'm just going to put two points kind of like that. Now, over here, if we look at the positioning, we'll see it's not quite on the muzzle. So I'm just going to move that a little bit just so we have it. And so this is just going to be a test version of it. When we draw it, we're going to dynamically set where this goes. And let's make the default color more lasery looking. And then for the capping, I'm going to make the end cap round. It looks a little better. So that's now coming out of the gun, projecting out. And our line 2D is basically always going to have two points. The starting point is going to remain the same all the time. It's the muzzle of the gun, but the ending point is going to be wherever the ray cast detects a collision, or its second point is going to be non-existent, right? If I remove the second point, I don't have a line. So that's the condition when we're not shooting or we haven't hit anything. All right, so let's look at the player's code. Right now, all I have in here is the movement code, and I just have a the left mouse click action um, calling a shoot function and that shoot function right now doesn't do anything so this is where we're going to do our our code so I'm going to add a couple of variables here we're going to have a beam duration this is going to be how long the beam lasts now while we're testing we can make this big you probably don't want it to be a long number um, but maybe you do. I'm going to put one and a half seconds. And I'm also going to make a cooldown. This is how long you have after the beam disappears before you can shoot again. And then this can shoot flag is what's going to determine if the shooting happens. See, we have this here. When you press click, it'll only shoot if that can shoot variable is true. And then um, one more variable called hit. This is going to be our collision. Did we detect a collision or not? So I like having this beam here for visibility for testing. But obviously when the game runs, I want this to disappear. I don't want to see this line sticking out of the player. So what we want to do is remove this second point in the line. And so I'm going to do that in the ready. I'm just going to say line 2D dot remove point number one. All right, we'll leave point number zero on there. So that way we have our line ready to go, ready to have the second point added when we shoot. So when we shoot, what do we do? We are shooting, so we're going to set can shoot to false. And then we're going to need to cast our beam, cast our ray to detect a collision. And I'm going to put that in a separate function because, as you'll see later, we're going to want to do some different things with it. So I'm going to assign that to a method. So I'm going to make a method called cast beam that's going to return. It's going to return either null if it didn't hit anything or a collision if it did hit something. Right, so rather than use the raycast2d node, which you could use for this, 
I'm going to use the direct space state method. So we're going to get world 2D and we're going to get the direct space state from that. And that's going to let us cast array in the current world space that will detect a collision with any physics objects. So result, the result is going to be space state dot intersect ray. Now the parameters that we pass to this, we need to, the start point. That's the muzzle global position. We need the end point. Well, that's the muzzle global position projected outwards. So we're going to take the transform.x of our player. And that's going to be the direction the player is pointing in and how far we want to cast it. Uh, I'm just going to put a thousand there for now. That's how far we want to cast this beam out. Oh, and then we don't want the beam to collide with ourself, just in case we have any kind of uh, one pixel overlap with our collision shape or something like that. Let's make sure we don't intersect with the player itself. Okay, so now we've cast a ray a thousand pixels forward. So the result is either going to be null or it's going to be equal to the collision. So if there's a result, then we want to add to the line 2D. And so you might think you could say add point uh, result dot position. All right, that's that's the location of the collision. And then we're going to return uh, result. So now if we try this, let me move over here into the center, and then I'm going to shoot. And you see how that is not a straight line at all. Right, it collided over there somewhere. And that's because the position is, this is a global position, but we're adding it to the line 2D, so we needed to use local coordinates. And we can do that by using the transform again. Right, transform again is the transform 2D of the player, so it has the player's position and rotation encoded in it. So we're gonna use transform, the transform inverse on the position result, and that will transform it to local coordinates. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. I'm gonna walk over here, I'm gonna shoot. Okay, it hit that spot, right? Now we're not able to shoot again because we haven't reset things, but two problems you notice. One is it did hit, right? It hit the wall there, but now when I move, the, the line is still extending that same distance even if I move. And I don't want that. I want the beam to stop when it hits the wall, no matter how I rotate while the beam is active. So we're going to need to update that position every frame because the player might be moving. Okay, so let's fix those problems. First, let's make it so we can shoot again. Well, after we shoot, we're going to give it, uh, we're going to say get tree, create timer, and we're going to use the beam duration. Right, that's how long we wanted the beam to show. And then we wait for that to time out. And then we will remove point one from the line. So now the line will disappear again. And we also want to set can shoot equal true. Actually, we want to wait. So the beam went for that long. We need another yield because we also want to wait for the amount that we gave the cooldown. So we're going to get tree, create timer, cooldown. Also wait for the timeout. And then we're going to set can shoot to true. So let's see how that looks. So we'll go over here, we shoot, it hit the wall, then the beam goes away, and I can shoot again. Right, so wherever I'm pointing, when I'm able to shoot, that's where the beam is cast to, and it stays that length. So the next thing we have to fix is that process of updating the length of the beam. Okay, so we have to go down here in our physics process. We want to update that beam as long as there is a, as long as there's a value of hit, right? So if hit isn't null, 
then we must have hit something and we want to update that beam. So we're going to call it again. Then it'll go through, cast the beam again, but it's going to add another point, right? And we don't want to do that, right? Because if we've already hit something, we already have two points in the line. We don't want to add a third point to the line. So if, if we have a result, we want to add a point if there's no, we hadn't ever hit anything before, right? It's the first time we've hit something. We're adding the point. Otherwise, we're going to update. We're going to set point position one to that same value. So we're going to grab this and update it to the new result. So let's try this. So I shoot at the wall, right? But now look, my error code is going crazy. And that is because hit is still hit is still valid after the timeout, right? I've removed a point from the line when the beam ended, but hit the value of hit hasn't changed because I haven't cast a new beam. So after we time out the beam, we need to just reset hit to null. And that will put everything back to the way it was so we can cast the next one. So now you can see the beam, as long as it lasts, won't go through any walls. And this is including if I keep moving around, I can shoot as I move. And we're all good. So that'll do it for our 2D laser effect tutorial. Um, obviously we kept the look of it very simple with a plain line 2D. There's a lot more things you could do to add world environment glow, to add shaders for uh, pulsing effects, to get something like this, which is a quick one that I did. But that will have to be a topic for another video. Click the link below to download the project and play with it yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.